Amazing. So hold on. Stop telling your followers. We're telling you. Okay, great. We are live. I'm hoping that that's not going to be too disruptive that we're on the side. How does it look? Does it matter on the side? Cool. Okay. Hello, everybody. So I'm here with Ed Warner, who is the founder and CEO of Fine and Able, who are the genius group behind my beautiful bathroom that has just been um, redone. For anyone who hasn't seen it, although I have been posting about it endlessly, um, you can have a look on my Instagram afterwards. There's videos of the process, there's videos of from the very beginning when it was um, before, when it was a wet room, how it was originally designed, and then the process of have, going through the consultation with Fine and Able, the entire thing from start to beginning, all the way to installation, and then, yeah, me using it. Um, even videos, I think, of me in the bath. I'm shameless. It's amazing. I love it. It has transformed my life. So it's amazing to be here with Ed and to talk Great. about the bathroom. Thank you, Ed. Um, and then we're going to start by introducing Fine and Able, and um, Ed, if you could explain why you set it up, a bit about the backstory. Sure. Firstly, great to have you here. It's long overdue to, to have you in our showroom in Twickenham. Pleasure. Just to give a bit of background behind Find and Able. So I set the business up in 2012 after the personal experience of an old school friend of mine and our co-founder, James Taylor, who was sadly paralysed in a diving accident at age 25. Uh, he spent eight months in Stoke Mandeville and then returned home to his flat in Battersea, South London, to find his home had suddenly turned into something that looked more like a clinical care home full of all the products that are often so kind of synonymous with sort of ageing and disability. Uh, and it was something he said to me over dinner in 2011 that still kind of resonates with me and the team today. And he said, every morning I wake up and I'm reminded of my condition because the products around me. And uh, as a, a friend, I sort of stupidly said, oh, I'll find you some decent product and started to look at the market and realised that everything was designed for function as opposed to form. Mm. And there was no consideration for people's taste or styles or aesthetics of the home. And it was all just a bit depressing. So I decided to leave the job that I was doing and, um, and set up Motion Spot with James's help. And... Uh, since then, we've kind of grown the business and, and then subsequently launched Fine and Able, our consumer brand, in the midst of COVID last year when everyone was at home and needing, you know, adaptations to keep themselves safe and secure at home. Mm. And it's just been an amazing kind of adventure over the last, what's it been, sort of 12, 18 months yeah. since it's launched. Absolutely. So, I mean, where do we even start? With, with my bathroom... I had a very similar story. I was living at home with a very functional but very ugly clinical looking bathroom and to exactly the same um, point as James, it, it felt every day I went into it that I was reminded I was disabled. It made me feel really, I think a little bit down. Yeah. And now, so I was very keen to, to, to renovate but it wasn't really until Final Label came around and the opportunity then presented itself that I thought this is it because there seems to be so few opportunities to find that beautiful balance between function and aesthetic. And that's really where Fine and Able excels, that's the USP. Thank you, it is. That's exactly the reason we set it up, um, is there are lots of people out there who either through you know disability or just simply getting older mm. and needing to stay in their own homes want a bit of additional support in the home. We worked out quite quickly that the bathroom was the area where people wanted the sort of changes to happen yeah. because everyone wants their own independence in the bathroom and the bathroom was sort of where the biggest design crimes tended to happen. <laughs> I love was, that, was, a design crime. You know, I remember coming to see your place in Southwark and it, it you know, I, I, I wouldn't name who the developer was but it was a bit of a design crime they'd put in there. It was just a drag and drop, a clinical looking product mm. and we tick a box to say it's wheelchair accessible and we move on. I don't wonder, I wonder as well in that process if a disabled person's actually consulted because you just imagine they're ticking the compliance box and it's like, right, this is how big the turning circle needs to be. And it was far bigger than it needed to be for me. So I know that not everything can be bespoke in that kind of when it's, it's mass produced in that way. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like yours in any way. And that's really not a nice feeling in your own home. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, the point you made is the personal touch. Yeah. It's, you know, it's recognising that everyone you know, has their, their own needs, styles and aspirations and, 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 and you know, Fine Label is all about how we can meet those, those, those kind of wishes and 
you know, it's been a really interesting process for us over the last 18 months as the business has grown because we've realised that actually what people really want is to have somebody at the end of a phone and video call and also in person when COVID restrictions allow us to be in, in person just to have a conversation yeah. as to what they might need now but what they might need in the future and importantly where products should go to, to, to meet someone's need. It's a really good point. So for anybody watching who's curious about that, the one of the, the the first sort of steps in this whole process is to contact Find Enable and to have a consultation, which is what I did initially. And it was a very much an open conversation around these are my needs, but these are also my wants. You know, I personally wanted a bath, for example, which isn't a typical feature for somebody who's a wheelchair user, but Find Enable were able to bring those needs in and we just worked back and forth. I think there may be two or three iterations, weren't there, of my design before we went, right, that's the winner. So that's a really important part of the process and for anyone interested, you just put, I'll put links into this afterwards, you can just head to the website and all the, all the, um, the links and numbers and everything that you might need to contact Find Enable's there. Um, about my bathroom, we've had a couple of questions uh, submitted um, submitted before this, which I'm just going to put to Ed now. So, first well, first ones are about cost, rough costs of my bathroom. Yeah, often asked. And yes. there's lots of people go on to find the label website and the first thing they say is, oh, this looks beautiful, but there's no way I can, I can afford this. This must be a £30,000 bathroom. Um, and it doesn't have to be. So our average cost of a fully fitted fine label bathroom is between ten and twelve thousand um, pounds. Yours costed uh, um, yours cost slightly more than yeah. that because there it's was some greedy. some amazing herringbone tiles. Yeah, in we spent there. a lot of time on the herringbone tiles. Uh, it was it was my decision. It was definitely above and beyond, <laughs> and the bath. And as well. the bath as well. Yeah. So I think your products came to something like eight thousand pounds in 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 that bathroom. But you know what. What James and I wanted to ensure when we set the business up was that everybody could have access to a fine and able uh, design service and the challenge that I put to the team every day is regardless of what budgets people have, we want to make sure that there is an element of personal choice that they're getting in their bathrooms and we really want to help as many people as possible have a bathroom of their dreams at home. Amazing. The next question is about how I get in and out of the bath. Now, I get asked this all the, all the time. <laughs> um, so I have a spinal injury, and just to clarify, I have made a little video about this, which is, I think, on the Fine and Able page. It's also on my page. It's on my TikTok. Um, it's quite a simple process, but it did take a lot of practice. Um, I basically uh, approach the bath in my chair. I put my feet over. I fill the bath up first. I put my feet over the bath. I then um, use a grab rail, which Fine and Able have uh, positioned in the right place, so I can reach forward, grab the grab rail, pull myself onto the side of the bath, slip into the water and then do the reverse process on the way back all with the water in the bath uh, to help soften the, the cushion in case you slip or anything. It's not the easiest, it did take a while but it's definitely doable although um, yeah you might want to practice it a few times <laughs> with clothes on without the water because it does get a little bit harder when, when you're wet. Um, can I just add on the bath? It's been fascinating since you had a bath installed because right. there's, there are no baths on our website. No. Because um, for for majority of wheelchair users, but also you know lots of disabled people, a really well designed shower with yeah. seat or, or or transfer space is um, is what's needed. But actually, having put the bath in your bathroom. It's had, we've had so many people saying, oh, well, actually, I quite like to have something similar and, and I really, you know, get therapeutic benefits of yes. having a bath yeah. and can you help design a bath that we can transfer into? So it is something that, and again, it's back, a can of worms. Well, no, it's back to that personal choice bit. You know, if you've got the space yeah. and the access to the bath is safe and we can plan it in the right way, then why shouldn't you have a bath? Yeah. What we wanted to get away from were those awful kind of walk-in baths yeah. that you get in and you get cold because you've got to wait for the water to fill up and even worse you can't get out until the water drains away again and yeah. and, and as you say by having grab rails in the right place but also some baths can have kind of shelves on the back of the bath that you can sit on to then transfer into the water so there are ways of doing it there are ways of doing it this is all it's about and that is really the, the key point to take home from all of this is this is a service that allows you to actually think about what you really want, because so often what we want and what we get are not the same thing when it comes to access. And um, that's why this is such an amazing and transformative process, um, because you really actually can think about what you really miss. And if you are somebody who has a spinal injury, for example, and you miss having a bath, 
Doesn't mean you can't have one. Um, the flooring. What material was the flooring? It's flooring I'm... is a porcelain. It's a porcelain slip resistant floor tile. But in your case, it's it's made to look like a wood effect yeah. flooring. So I think with Alison, who helped you design the bathroom, you fell in love with God, that love wood effect. Flooring. I love it. The reason I love it is a little bit um, of a secret to why I love it. I I when my wheels get wet, they leave a tread mark. And I got so tired of having a lighter coloured floor and having to constantly clean the bathroom floor that it actually allows me to just not have to clean the bathroom floor so much because now the wood's a bit darker, it's a bit more forgiving. So I love it for that reason. And it's beautifully finished because it throws on from the effect of the um, flooring in the rest of my flat. So it's beautiful. We've had lots of people again contact us saying, I didn't know you could have wood flooring in bathrooms. And how does the shower work over the wood floor? Oh, and brilliantly. And, and we explain actually it, it, is, it is a porcelain tile that looks like wood so it's fully you know, water resistant and importantly the, the really important quality in an in accessible fine label bathroom is the slip resistance so so many floor tiles particularly if they're slightly glossy in texture just when you get water on them they become such mm. a slip hazard yeah. um, but the, the, there is a like, technical rating of your tile that will mean that, that, that actually, you, you know, from a slip resistance point of view, it, you know, that it prevents slips and trips. See, beautiful and functional. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, what's this question? How do you know what height to install when the toilet to install when you have multiple users using with varying needs? Yeah. So how do you know which height to install the toilet? Good question. Yeah, great yeah, question. Really good question. I suppose it goes back to your point about that kind of clinical pack that was dropped in by the developers. and. You know, developers drop in a pack of product, mm. all set at one particular height for commercial settings, and they say, well, this is a residential block, we'll just design it for a commercial setting, and that doesn't work. With, with you, um, what we did was we measured the height of your wheelchair mm. and ensured that the toilet um, seat was positioned at the same transfer height, so it was a very easy side transfer for you. But I think the question there is over, actually, if you've then got... Yeah. You know, people are varying heights and sizes uh, in the bathroom. How how do we plan for that? It is difficult, um, and in that particular case, we would want to understand who's using the bathroom and what their different heights and sizes are, so we could position it at a height that tries to work for all that of them. Well. But there are some really clever products on the market, like um, wash and dry toilets that are now becoming more and more popular. So the, these are toilets that actually not only um, wash and dry have the wash and dry function but you can actually adjust the height of the toilet by 20 millimeter increments okay. so if you did have yeah. people of different heights there's technology that can design around something it. for everybody um, where are the tiles from is the last question on here uh, the tiles are from the fine label range from a manufacturer in Italy who we've got a fantastic relationship with um, uh, our team are desperate to go out to Italy, unsurprisingly, and, and <laughs> test the slip resistance and the colour of, of those tiles. But, um, it, you know, we've got a growing range at Fine Label through a wonderful Italian manufacturer who, fingers crossed at the moment, is doing an amazing job at getting trucks to get our tiles in because building sites at the moment are challenging. Not easy time. They're challenging. Yeah, times, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to check how we're doing and if there's any questions come in, but I can't actually tell. So I'll just go on and talk about, um, so it's Invisible Disabilities Week this week. And actually it's something that um, we wanted to touch on because Fine and Able don't just design for people like me, not just wheelchair users, you design for everybody. We do, we do. Uh, and very topical that it is Invisible Disabilities Week because we have an awful lot of clients who come to us with um, you know, a need, whether that be a visual impairment or even a hearing impairment or um, you know another invisible disability and still want a really kind of accessible and inclusive bathroom and there's some really kind of small design tricks that our design team have got that can make a, a bathroom feel like home and still deliver for everybody so things like thinking about the kind of decibel level of the extractor fan is a really important design feature because for someone with autism or ADHD or you know with with any form of hearing impairment or cognitive impairment that decibel level could just be a real distraction within the bathroom thinking about lighting as well is really important making sure that um, that there's the right light particularly mm -hmm. over kind of basin areas and over the toilet and in the shower 
Um, but I, I, I haven't got a picture of your bathroom to hand, but I'm pretty sure we designed it in a way that had contrasting walls with the grab rails and then yeah. the walls contrasted with the floor. So if someone does have a visual impairment, they're able to to you know they're able to sort of define yeah. where the um, where, where the grab rails are and, and almost where the walls and the floors start and finish. Is it something that people don't quite re seem to realise is that so often you see white on white, don't you, in bathrooms, yeah. which is just very very difficult to it's navigate. So difficult yeah. to pick out where the supports are, mm. um, and so, because so many people again, you know, with vision impairments, actually navigate the room using the ceiling to to understand the use of space and, and how big a room is. If you've got a wall colour and a ceiling colour that's the same colour, or if you've got a floor colour and the wall that's the same colour, it just makes it very hard to navigate. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and in terms of future proofing, it's something, it's a term that we might be familiar with, but um, some people might not be. It's something that you you really are conscious of here at Final Label. Could you talk a bit more about it? Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to start a bit of a movement and an understanding <laughs> around future proofing because, you know, so many of, uh, of our clients that come to us come to us because there's an immediate need yeah. and there's an immediate problem that needs solving and, of course, we can help solve that problem. But we're trying to change the mindset in the building industry and also with people at home to get people to understand that actually... If we design forever homes, we don't need to, do to necessarily that. make these changes mm -hmm. if there is a need at mm -hmm. any given point in life. So, um, you know, we, we, have a, we, we have a lot of customers coming to us saying, I'm building my final home, what considerations do I need to make? I haven't necessarily got a particular need now, but can you help me design it in a way that if I needed a walking stick or a frame, a rollator, a wheelchair potentially at some stage in the future. How can I have a home that can be sort of modular and you can clip things on if you need to, but it's designed in a way that just looks and feels like a home, yeah. but it can adapt to suit someone's need if they need to future proof. Because it's something that my family have just been talking about. Um, my mum and dad have a garage that they want to convert and we were talking about how, that, how to make it more inclusive for me obviously to be able to use it. But we then had a conversation around, well, what if they live in their forever home. What happens if one of them was to get sick or as they get older to be less um, able to get around their current home? What if we could make this house, this, this small conversion, more accessible for the future, which is exactly what we're talking about, future proofing. Yeah. So we've now been through a process of considering what kind of bathroom they might need. At the moment, they, they use baths or showers quite, you know, they don't have to think about that. But what would happen if anything uh, what happened as they got older, how would they want to use their bathroom. So we've been having conversations here with some of the team around how to future-proof the bathroom and the kitchen. I mean, of course, as a family, we're very cognizant of, of not being able to be um, mobile because of me. And so we've got, for example, features in the kitchen, such as the pull-down baskets in yep. the kitchen, which is an area you're thinking of going into kitchens. I know that is. bathrooms are a speciality at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, we will be we, we will be extending into kitchens yeah. soon. Um, it's sort of back to my point before. There is such a need for bathrooms at the moment that um, it's getting the capacity right to ensure that whatever we're launching after bathrooms, we can do it to the same sort of quality and degree mm. as, as as bathrooms. Yeah. Really. Um, but I'm fascinated by kind of what you're planning with your parents yeah. because what so often happens is people don't have that conversation and everyone sort of buries the, the conversation of actually what... Well, it's, a tough question. it's a tough conversation to have actually, it isn't is. it? Yeah. And perhaps because I use a wheelchair, we're much more honest about you know, the limitations of our bodies. Maybe people don't want to hold that conversation. They don't want to think about getting older. But, it, you know, you do. You get older. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, and I think, you know, in, in all of our learnings over the years, people bury the conversation because they're scared of what the future may look like, both in terms of physically, but also the surroundings. And if we can demonstrate to, to people that actually you can still have a really beautiful home that yeah. can adapt and support if you need to, I think you're, you're, you're kind of, you're crossing one of those hurdles that people are currently putting up. And, yeah. and, and why people aren't thinking about what they'll need in the future. It's something that disability advocates say often, and I, I see people visibly recoil when we do, which is we're all sort of pre-disabled. Disability can happen to anyone at any time, and people kind of want to bury their heads in the sand a little bit from it. 
that reality seems like a dead end, you don't want that to happen, but it's, it's a fact of life. Um, the figures around disability are, are hard to pin down. We do say there's one in five of the population um, identify as disabled, with more people actually in our group than probably we even realise. But it is that kind of inevitability. There will be a time when you will temporarily or permanently feel disabled or be disabled. So future proofing is a hard conversation to have. I can see where there's the hesitance, but it's such a great one. And I think it's really liberated my family to know that whatever happens, if, my, if they were to need a space that could meet their needs, I could also be there to look after them. Yeah. You know, it enables me to be there with them. If yeah. they were to, if say, my dad fell and wasn't able to use his home, which is not accessible, it's all on, it's on two stories, yeah. he would be able to stay there, I could get in and look after him. It's just you know? inclusive for everybody. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that benefit of, of, of sort of improved health and well-being, of yeah. having the right access in the home, I independence, and we've seen so many of our, our clients and, and it's the best bit about working in this business and if you speak to the team they'll say the same is just the feedback we get from clients around the impact that we've had mm -hmm. on their lives and you know some of the most striking things are around you know people saying well I, I can just entertain again I, I can have people over without feeling embarrassed that they have to walk in and my bathroom looks and feels like a hospital. Yeah. It's those little things that make are such big a things. difference and, and they are they are huge things. They are the huge. Time. It sounds like an, this is not a sales pitch from me. I go into my bathroom and it cha I feel like a better person. I feel like a different person. It's sort of it's it's good to back to the, your original point about what James said and why you started this in the first place is that feeling of I feel reminded that I'm not the same as everybody else yeah. and my home isn't the way I want it to look and it is a privilege to be able to have a bathroom that feels great but it shouldn't be you know it's it's that's where it's so exciting I'm so sort of I feel very very lucky to, to have, have had the final enable service well thank, <laughs> thank you for coming to us and and also for helping raise awareness because and that's what today's about yeah. really is just whether people whether people pick up the phone to the team at Fine Label or not, it's just changing the mindset that actually there are alternatives to yeah. what is out there at the moment and yeah. giving people the confidence that that they should be pushing and asking for different because just because someone has a disability it doesn't mean that they have to put up the second best. Yes, hundred percent. So how long have we got? I don't know what time we're at. Oh I think we've gone over. Okay, we have gone over. Um Ed, thank you. I just want you to finish this video by just telling people what to do, where to go and how to get in touch if they are interested. And of course, you can contact me on my social media with any questions about my bathroom, my experience. Very happy to share. Great. Um, well, thanks everyone for, for joining this session. If, if anyone has any questions or is interested in finding out more about Fine and Able, please visit our website, findenable.co.uk. Um, and you, you can also download a brochure which has got information on our process. Um, you know, we, we run kind of free consultations initially just to have a conversation and understand what people need um, and then have a really kind of clear, clearly laid out plan um, that it, whether you're purchasing product or you want someone to, to kind of be involved in the install, we'll, we'll do as much or as little as possible. But really, really good to, to be part of today's conversation. Thanks, Ed. And yeah, get in touch, everyone. I can't, I can't recommend it more. Amazing. Thank you for joining. Thanks all. Bye. Right. Now, how do I end it? Boop. Are you sure that you want to end your live video?